Hello, it's Mandy, and today I really wanted to show you all how using Microsoft's new adaptive ecosystem has completely changed the way that I do audio editing. Now, I know most of you probably know me from my cosplay work, but I also do some commercial voiceover work on the side. Um, somehow I got into medical voiceover recently. Cigarette smoking can cause early abdominal aortic atherosclerosis. But I'm also a huge tech nerd, so it was really exciting to be able to beta test Microsoft's new adaptive ecosystem. Now I know that's a mouthful, but basically they have developed this system uh, that includes a mouse and a button and a hub to link everything together. And there's also all kinds of 3D printed attachments and button toppers that you can get that pretty much make this accessible to whatever kind of physical need that you might have. Now these were created for people with disabilities in mind, but I see so much potential in how these could be beneficial to just about anybody. And one of the big ways that these are awesome is that you can add macro commands onto your buttons. So of course, the first big question is, what in the world is a macro? So a macro is a series of keyboard strokes that you can program in sequence and be able to do all of those steps at one time with the click of a single button. It's pretty amazing. Now, before I was able to program macros into the adaptive ecosystem, um, I actually had to go back and forth from the mouse to the keyboard so much when I was doing audio editing. Uh, for example, I would have to select a whole section using the mouse, and then I would have to go to the keyboard to tell it to take the volume all the way down, and then back to the mouse again every single time I took a breath. Now, I can do all that like this. Amazing! Now, I know the next question is going to be, are these macros really hard to set up? And the answer is no, they're actually pretty easy using the Microsoft Accessory Center that you'll have access to with the Adaptive Hub. I think the trickiest part of setting up macros is that you have to be able to accomplish the task using only the keyboard and not the mouse. And you'll see why in a second. So because of that, you really need to map out exactly what steps you need to take. You need to make sure you write them all down so that you can follow those steps again exactly when you program the macro itself. So now I'm actually going to walk you through how I set up this macro to work. I like to use Audacity for my audio editing because it is an awesome program and it's free. So now that I'm in Audacity and I have highlighted the sound I want to remove, I'm first going to press Alt to access the menu. Now once you press Alt, you may notice that each of the menu items has a letter underlined. And that is actually a keyboard shortcut that we can use to quickly access that menu. But you can also use the directional arrow keys. I'm going to press C to access the effect menu. And then I need to get to amplify, so I'm going to push the down arrow two times, and then press enter to get to amplify. Now it already has selected a recommended amplification, but I'm going to press minus 50 in order to take that volume all the way down to the lowest point you can get in Audacity. And then I'm going to press enter for okay so that I can finish that task. And I've done what I needed to do. That macro combination that I needed to write down is now complete. So now that we know all the steps for our macro, it's time to actually program it in Microsoft Accessory Center. So when we open up Accessory Center, we're going to first click on the Microsoft Adaptive Hub. And then down at the bottom, we'll click on the Microsoft Adaptive button. As you can see, this opens up a series of directional buttons that we can now assign different commands to. I'm going to click on the down button just because that's one of the easiest and most natural for me to press with my residual limb. Now you can see that we can assign all kinds of commands to this button, from shortcuts to mouse actions and keystrokes down to macro commands. So I'm going to click on macro command and then create a new macro. The first thing that we want to do is name our macro. So we can click here on the edit function and I'm going to name this macro volume to zero. And then I'll click on the check mark to make sure that's saved. The next step is to record the actions of the macro. 
And this is where we're going to need that list that we had written down because we're going to copy those actions exactly as we did them. So I'm going to click Start Record and then press Alt to access the menu, C to access the Effects menu, Down, Down, Enter to access Amplify, minus 50 to take the volume all the way down and then Enter to complete that task. Before I press anything else, I want to make sure I press stop so that the macro stops recording. And it's that easy. The last step is simply to click save. And as we can see, this is now going to be successful. After we click close, our macro is now assigned to the down button and will be in use as soon as we open up Audacity again. We can check that by going to down button. And then we can see that the macro command is set to volume to zero. Here are a couple of the other settings that I find really helpful when I'm doing audio editing. First, I have macros that can increase and decrease the speed by 1% so that I can seamlessly mix two audio clips together. I also have a macro that can decrease the volume by two decibels, just since that tends to be what I need to do automatically with my voice. I also have Control Z to undo and Control Y to redo my last action, as well as Control R, which repeats the last action I did from the effects menu. I also have settings to shift with the right arrow and shift with the left arrow so that I can really fine tune my audio selections. You can also set four profiles that can easily be switched between using the hub as well as app specific profiles so that as soon as you open that app, your button settings will automatically reconfigure to what you have programmed for that app specifically. You can actually set 16 different commands per profile because each button setting also has options for a short press and a long press. I really love these products because I feel like I can actually use my residual limb in a way that feels really natural and productive. Uh, but honestly, I could use two of these. I could have one on each hand and I would be like so fast. I'm very competitive. Seriously though, I'm so excited that Microsoft is investing in these kinds of products for people with disabilities. I think we are so creative and resourceful, and this is the kind of innovation that's going to help us be so much more productive at our jobs and in our daily lives. But really, like this could help just about anybody. My husband keeps saying he'd like to take this one to his work, but like, this one's mine. However, you can grab one for yourself really, really soon. I'm going to post the link to Microsoft's page in the video description. You can click on that and make sure you get on the email list so you'll know as soon as it comes out and you can be one of the first people to grab one of these amazing new devices. That's all for today, but I am so excited to see what the future holds. We'll see you guys next time.